broadcast audience, the ones who are listening to me on Facebook and other uh, media channels that we are streaming through on this morning. Uh, I bring you uh, in the name of Jesus, who's the head and author and finish of my faith. And I am just indeed glad to be here to give you a thought, something to make it through Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and, and Saturday to make it back on Sunday. And so we're going to give you a thought that I hope that you will apply it to your everyday life. Some things that we need to be doing um, that we're not doing, and God is uncovering everything. And these uh, times and places that we are living in, uh, we know Jesus is in control of our lives. So let's have a quick prayer. Uh, I have been Father, Lord, we first of all, asking you to forgive us, Lord, for all the sins, Lord, that we have committed by the mission, your own mission, Lord. And Lord, we just want to thank you, Lord, for touching us, Lord, for giving us some mind and heart to tune in to this broadcast. Uh, Lord, not only tune in, but to see uh, this broadcast. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for giving us the mind and heart to do that on this morning, taking off our busy schedule to set aside a time uh, to listen to the word of God. And Lord, we ask you to bless this moment, Lord, as we share it together. Lord, we ask you to bless it, Lord, that we might get fed. Lord, we might understand the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, getting into our word, um, um, today uh, I was looking in our Bible class book um, as something that we uh, diligently uh, was going through before this coronavirus hit and we was having a good time in Bible class. And one of the things in Bible class that really sparked my interest was this. It says, to live the Christian life is to allow Jesus to live his life in and through you. How do that happen? How do that uh, to live a Christian life and Jesus is living through us? How do that happen? Well, here in Galatians, uh, Paul explains how that happens. Galatians 2 and 20, it says, I am crucified with Christ. What do he mean that I am crucified with Christ? Well, well Paul runs his mind back when he got knocked off of his horse and he hit the ground and he was blind. At that time, Paul accepted Jesus Christ. All right? And a lot of old people say, I died one time. I ain't going to die no more. <laughs> I didn't understand back then what the old people was talking about. But now I understand what Paul was saying that my name used to be Saul and everything I did and saw is dead. He said, I am a new creature in Christ. Old things has passed away. Uh -huh. and, and that's what the old people used to say when they accepted Christ as a personal savior. I am a new creature in Christ. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. All the old things that I used to do, I used to say, I don't do it no more. And so I understand what they was talking about. And I understand what Paul was talking about. He said, I, die, I am crucified with Christ. He said, when I was when Christ was on the cross, he bared all my sins. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I died with him when he died on that cross. And I rose with him when he rose one morning soon with all power in his hand. All right. But then he said, never. Unless I live, mm -hmm. I died, I rose, and I live. Yet not I, but Christ who lives in me, and the life which I now live, and the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God who loves me and gave himself for me. 
Man, that's, a, that's, a, that's some beautiful words there. Right. The Paul is letting them know that Christ gave himself for us. That he loved us. Here Paul is coming to the Galatian church here to uh, preach to them and to tell them about the word of God. We know that there was Gentiles among them and there was Jews also and there was a little argument going on between the Jews and the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Now here Paul wanted to preach to the Gentiles but first Paul had to get everybody on the same page. All right. Mm -hmm. There were some people who wasn't on the same page. There was preaching that you had to be circumcised mm -hmm. to be saved. Yes. Paul even had to get had to check Peter. Because <laughs> Peter needed to be checked. <laughs> what happened if you read the whole chapter, the second verse, you will find out that Peter needs to be checked. Mm -hmm. And Paul was the one who checked it. And what happened? Peter was eating with the Gentiles, having fun, and you know, all that was going on, and then he seen the Jews and other people who were circumcised coming. And he and he distanced himself from the Gentiles. Mm. And there was no social distance back then, but he distanced himself. He had like he did not know them. He had a fellowship with and when he did that, the Jews that was with him, they did the same thing. Mm. So brothers and sisters, it's not what we say all the time, but it's what we do and how we act to certain situations that people will see us distant ourselves. Okay. And so they saw Peter and they believed in Peter. And Peter, this is our, this is myself. And Paul saw this going on and he had to go talk to Peter. And he got Peter on the right page. All right. It's very important when you go out to witness that you all are saying the same thing. Amen. Before you go out, you need a study. You need to get together everybody who is going out. Mm -hmm. We must believe the same thing. We have to believe the same thing when we are going out. We have to be on one page. We can't be confused, but we need to be all on the same thing. We need to read the same thing. We need to believe in Jesus Christ. We must know what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. right. Because the world is listening and seeing us out there. And don't you know the devil will try to confuse you? Yes. Try to throw something at you? All right. And then we totally refuse, we, we, we look at him, I don't know what to say. Well, God don't want us to be unprepared. He wants to be prepared at all times. Amen. Yes. And we must be prepared. We must be able to explain what we are talking about. Mm -hmm. And we must have faith in Christ. And that's the only way we can do this, God, is by our faith in God. Amen. He said, I'm, I'm crucified with Christ. And he said, nevertheless, I live, yet not but Christ lives in me. Don't you know that when we accept Christ as our personal Savior, and we ask for forgiveness, and we let him in, and when we let him in, we got to let him all the way in. All different parts of our life. I know we got some doors that we shut, and I'm like, oh no, I, I don't want you to go in there, but you know, stay here. No, God said, I gotta be free to roam your life, to get it every part of your life. Because I want to be a part of your life, so I need to be in your life. And Christ will come in. And I like that He brings the Holy Spirit when He comes in. What do the Holy Spirit does? It corrects us, it guides us, it leads us. Yes. It tells us before we do wrong. And I know we all have, if you have a self Christ as your personal Savior, you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. So you ain't say, well, I didn't know. Yeah, yeah, you did, no. Because I know what, how the Holy Spirit works in me. When I go to do something wrong, he warns me. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. He said, now, Ernest, now, yeah, you know that's wrong. Now, you do it if you want to do it. But I'm telling you, it's wrong. Sometimes I listen. Most time I listen. But sometimes I get hard-headed. I said, Lord, I got this. I, I, I get this now. And he knows what we can bear. He knows uh, our temptation level. He knows the things that would get us. And he said, now don't go down that street. Okay. Because there's some things that's going to tempt you and you won't be able to handle it. Oh, well, I can handle them. <laughs> and we go down and we find ourselves getting caught up in some mess. Because we couldn't handle it and God told us that we couldn't handle it. We are to listen to the Holy Spirit like Paul did. Paul listened to God. He listened to Jesus Christ. He knew that I am weak, but thou art strong. And we got to stop saying that we all this in a bag of chips. Come on. We are not all Come that. On. We are weak at times in our lives. Yes. But we have to admit that we are weak and Jesus is strong. Because when we admit that we weak, we are pinned and we lean on Jesus. Amen. That's a beautiful thing. Yes, it is. All my help comes from him. Amen. And so we have to have faith to believe in Jesus Christ. And God loves our faithfulness. He loves when we have faith and depend on him. Before we go out to witness to people, before we go out into the edges of highways of this world, we need to pray. Amen. Our faith needs to be on level before we leave here. And when we leave here, we are to go out sometime in twos. Like Paul and Silas. Paul preached and Silas sung. Paul prayed while Silas sung. They was two, and they was powerful together. Mm -hmm. And so we need to go out in twos, but sometimes we can't go out in twos. Sometimes we get grocery shopping, and somebody come along, and they see what we have on, or they heard, or they saw something in us, and they say, you must be a Christian. All right. And then we need to not just be arrogant, not be high-minded. Mm -hmm. But we need to humble ourselves yes. and say, yeah, I'm a Christian, and Christ lives inside of me. Mm -hmm. How can I help you? Because all my help comes from God. It's not me that does this. It's God. Even when I pray for somebody, I say, give God the praise. Don't thank me. Praise God. But a lot of times, you know, that flush side kicks in. Mm -hmm. And we want to praise. We want people to say we did this and we did that. No. God don't get the glory when we do those things. So we must live for Christ. Yes. And as I said, live, for, live the Christian life is allowing Jesus to live his life in and through us. Amen. And so when we live in the Christian life, when we're doing what we're supposed to do, when we follow the directions of the Holy Spirit, Christ is living through us. But what about when we're not following Jesus? Uh -oh. When we're not doing the things that please God? Who are we living for? Mm. I'm just saying, I'm not, I'm not trying to judge anybody, but who are we living for? We need to think about that. When we're doing everything under the sun, when we're cutting up, when we cussing, and we're doing this, and we're doing that, who are you representing? Amen. Who are you living for? Mm -hmm. And we need to ask ourselves that question. I know we, we you know, before this coronavirus, everybody was doing their thing. Thing was great, but there's only great for you. They weren't great for everybody. Come on. We weren't concerned about the poor. We weren't concerned about the homeless. We weren't concerned about the mother and daughter outside. We weren't concerned about the father that didn't have a job. We weren't concerned about the homeless people. We were just happy that God was blessing us. Come we weren't paying attention 
And so God said, I need to get y'all attention. So he allowed this coronavirus to happen. And sure enough, he got our attention now. Yes, he did. We are listening and we are looking. And like I said on Sunday, those those little things that we took for granted, they are big things now. Mm -hmm. We're not taking those little things for granted. And I thank God for every little thing, so-called little thing that God has done for me. And I find myself, when I open the refrigerator, I'm thanking God. Man, that when I reach in there, I'm pulling out something. Amen. That is more than a light bulb on in there. <laughs> that is food, and I look at my freezer, it's packed. Can't get nothing else in there. And I just praise God. Look in the cabinets, and it's packed also. And I'm just thanking God for that. Have I always thanked God for all those things? No, not always. And I, and I just thank God that when I look at the house that I'm living in, I just thank God for it. Thank God for every room. And, and also, I thank God for my wife. Because I, I haven't always had a wife. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about wife. All right. All right. Talking about good thing. Come on. All right. And I thank God for her who who fills in the gaps where I, where I can't fill them in. She always got my back and she always doing things that I didn't think she could do. But God's blessing with a good wife, a good family, and I'm just thankful for that. I'm just thankful for that. And not only am I thankful for the material things that's around me, but Lord, I thank you for I'm in good health. I, I feel good, Lord. I can see, I can feel, I can taste. All of those things we take for granted. Yes. But I'm not taking those things for granted anymore. All right. So I wonder what's going to happen when it's all over. Mm -hmm. When everything go back to normal. But I'm here to tell you, brothers and sisters, everything is not going to go back to normal in my life. Mm -hmm. There's some changes that have to be made all right. in my life. And I'm going to make those adjustments accordingly. But you have to look at your own life and see what you need to adjust, adjust in your life. See what I need to change. See what I need to do better in my life. Because brothers and sisters, I know there's a lot of things in everybody's life that we can do something different and something better. And so I want to praise God more. I want to thank Him more. I want to be more appreciated more. Yes. And when I look at the everyday life, I want to take that day and thank God for it. We had some beautiful weather on yesterday. Amen. And we set out and I thank God for the sunshine. I thank God for the rain. Because we need all that. We need the rain. We need the sunshine. We need the storms that happen. We need all that because if we didn't have a storm, we would never appreciate the sunshine. Amen. And I appreciate that. And even when it's storming, I know the S-U-N is, is, is not shining, but the S-O-N is always shining in my life. Amen. And I give him the praise. And so we have to give God the praise. We have to roll our minds back and give God the praise for everything that he brought us through. And we have to admit that it wasn't me, Lord, but it was you. Amen. It wasn't that I was so smart. It wasn't because I was so educated. But, Lord, it was you who guided me kept me through all those years and you still keeping me today. There's a thousand there's a thousand people who died just this morning. I could have been one of those thousands of people. Amen. But God chose to keep me here. Amen. And I say, God, thank you for letting my life roll on for another day. And that's just a blessing within itself. So we have to be more thankful. We got to let God live in our lives. And when he lives through our life, other people will see that. And we got to give him the glory and honor. We got to give him everything. And we got to thank God. It's all right praising God in your house. But we need to also praise God in the grocery store. Praise God at the bank. And I'm not talking about getting indignant and howling and going on. But we need to give God some praise. Amen. Sometimes we don't have to say a word. It's just going on in our mind. Lord, thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord, that I was able to catch my check and it went through. Amen. Thank you, Lord, that the bills have been paid. Thank you, Lord, that I still got a roof over my head. You don't have to shout that out. You can just run it through your mind. Yes. And a smile will come on your face. Amen. Because God is the one who is blessing you. And so we give glory to God. We give honor to him that I'm living a life that he will be pleased with and that he's living through men. But you know God lives through us. All right. He does things for other people through us. The only way that homeless person will be helped is through us. It's through our hands and through our feet and through our generosity. You got to let God use you. Yes. Yes. And he will use you. And, and my prayer, God, use me up. <laughs> so when I come to the kingdom, I won't have nothing. I say like Paul, I follow good fight. I kept the course. I am empty. I have nothing else. Mm -hmm. Take me on in, Lord. And so that's what I want. That's what I'm looking for. And that's what I'm working for. It's to work until I can't work no more. Yield one until I can't give no more. Love until I can't love no more. Amen. Amen. And so I, I, I want to be done. I don't want anything left over. I don't want nothing in between. I want to be bone dry mm. when I see Christ. All right, all right. Amen. Yes. And that's a blessing when you think like that and you feel that way. So brothers and sisters, we have some work to do. Like I said, Paul had to get some people straightened. And we're going to have to get some people straight ourselves. When we see something is wrong, when we see something is not right, and God tells the speaker, speak up. Speak up. All right. Don't, you. don't worry about what people are going to say. Don't worry about what they're going to call you. Speak up like Paul did. And he spoke up against Apostle Peter. Mm -hmm. He didn't care who it was. You wrong, Peter. All right. <laughs> you wrong. And Peter accepted it, and they moved on. And when they went out, and they started preaching to the churches, they was on one accord. Amen. They all were saying the same thing. They all was believing in the same thing. And so they was able to be effective. And brothers and sisters, the only way we would be effective is we gotta train, we gotta read our word, and we gotta be on one accord. Thank you. Let us have a prayer. I have a Father who will come. Thank you for the thought, Lord, that you have planted in our hearts and our minds. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, let that thought blossom. Let it blossom through our lives, Lord, right now. Lord, that we might remember and Lord, that we might apply to our everyday life. Lord, we know that we haven't been the person that you have been well pleased with. Lord, we know that we haven't did everything that we could do. And Lord, we know that we did some things that's not pleasing to you. But Lord, right now, we ask forgiveness. Lord, we ask right now to give us the patience, Lord, that we need. Give us the instruction, Lord, that we need. And Lord, increase our faith, Lord, right now. Lord, that we might do the things that are signed to our hands, Lord. And Lord, that we might do them well, Lord. Lord, that we might put the boldness, Lord, that we need to don't talk to people. Lord, give us that boldness, Lord. Yes, Lord. To go out into the highways and tell dying men, women, and children that you live and you live in me. Yes, Lord. And all of that, that you don't only live in me, but you live through me, Lord. Will come out of my mouth, Lord, as you're talking. What I do good, Lord, is you doing it. You're controlling me. And Lord, I want to be controlled by you. Yes, Lord. Like Paul said, I'm a slave for you. And Lord, I'm saying to you, Lord, I want to be a good ambassador for you. Yes, Lord. I want to show men and women how good you are and how grateful you are and how you live and how you die. Lord, I thank you right now. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, I ask you to bless everyone who's listening, everyone who has seen they broadcast on their phones or however they see it on the computers or whatever. Lord, I ask you to bless them with a special blessing. Right. Lord, I ask you to keep them, Lord, from all harm and danger. Lord, that no coronavirus or nothing 
by the attack of the Lord right now. And Lord, I, I just ask you to bless everyone in this room right now, Lord. Keep your arms and text around us, Lord. Yes, sir. And Lord, we want to say, Lord, that we love you. And we glorify your name. Yes, sir. In Jesus' name we pray. Yes, Amen. Amen. Amen.